The World Health Organization has named heart failure the disease of the century. With cases becoming more ubiquitous, it's typically the leading cause of death in the United States every year. And while conventional therapies and pharmaceuticals have come a long way in the past 50 years, people entering the end stages of heart failure have only one effective solution, an expedient heart transplant. But with a wide array of obstacles standing in the way of connecting a viable donor to a patient in a timely manner, luck can be the most valuable asset along this harrowing, time-consuming journey until the introduction of the total artificial heart. Thanks to the innovation brought to us by a unique collaboration between physicians and engineers, the TAH has been implanted in men, women, and children all over the world, enabling heart failure patients to return to normalcy until their time on the wait list is finally over. If you look at the statistics, we have millions of patients with heart failure in the, in the United States. Seven million patients and the number is expected to double over the next one to two decades. The reality is that heart failure sadly is a component of aging. And we're all trying to age well, but no matter what, since this is a multivariable type disease, people will develop heart failure. And those are the patients that we really need to come in with mechanical circulatory support. The idea of a device as a therapy, not a drug, to actually save their lives. I've been athletic all my life, played basketball, played tennis, ran track, uh, so I was feeling pretty good. Uh, then in 2012, I had to get a pacemaker, and I had that for two years. Uh, it was going okay, but then my electrophysiologist said that uh, your ejection fraction is going down, and you need to go to Cedar sinai you might need a, a heart transplant. In 2014, I had had a, a big heart attack. All these years of kind of eating light, being in shape and so forth, I mean, it's kind of, you know, traumatic, you know. You know I'm talking to my wife and my kids and my family that, hey, this is something that's going to go down. The majority of the people who need a heart transplant are blood type O. The, the one that is the most difficult to find is the blood type O. On size, we try to stay within 20% of the height and 20% of the weight. If they are of a large size, well, donors usually don't come in very large size. We have had patients who have waited three or four years just because of size. In the case of Lance, we were delighted when we found the right one, and then uh, we performed the operation, uh, that everything went very well. So although it was difficult, at the end, everything worked out. So after decades of exhaustive research with hundreds of scientists spending hundreds of million dollars, we've arrived at the current version of the total artificial heart. That's comprised of three different components. The implant being the primary component, and that's being powered by one of two external drivers. The drivers are pneumatically driven, and it's all intended to simulate what's going on with the native heart. It's really intended for that end-stage heart failure patient, biventricular failure, that really has no other options. The trick, though, is to not wait until that patient is already so sick that their kidneys and other organs are starting to fail. They need to at least have some clinical stability before you know, the implant can really do its job. So I went to Cedars, I had the opportunity to meet with the whole staff, and they said I was a candidate to get a heart transplant. The good thing is that working with Cedar sinai and Syncardia to explain it to me, and they did it in such a uh, elementary way that everybody could understand it. And I think that if you understand the information and you see the progress of technology, you can see where you're going to be. I can see the hope. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I had this great device, Total Official Heart from Syncardia, that allowed me to live a normal life. Comparing a heart transplant to a total artificial heart, there are some differences. The total artificial heart, you leave about 25% of the heart in place with no valves, and you connect the new total artificial heart to that. In the heart transplant, you actually take about 85% of the heart out and put the donor heart in place. The total artificial heart reestablishes blood flow in the body that has been suffering from a poor heart and sometimes it takes time for the organs to recover. It doesn't happen immediately. It sometimes takes weeks or months for the patient to recover and the organs to recover. To get to that point that then you can do the transplant. And the best thing to do is an artificial heart because you can make the artificial heart, you can build the artificial heart, then you can offer it to more patients. You cannot do that with a human heart. As far as being able to get your life back to some normalcy of what you're used to before, 
That's probably the best way to put it. You know, I felt like myself to a degree. I had it for two and a half years, so my life was normal. I actually could go on road trips. I had my batteries, I could plug in. So I was able to participate in all the things my family was doing. I didn't have to stay home. You could do whatever you want to do. Travel the way you want to travel. Two and a half years seems somewhat long, but if you're doing the things you want to do and participating in your family, that's the best thing in the world. You know, you gotta kind of have like a hiatus. So after those two and a half years, um, in August of 2016, a uh, heart donor came about for me to go ahead. And naturally you're excited about that, but uh, that was the best bridge, so to speak, the total official heart that you could ever have, given the circumstance. Once both the public and cardiologists and cardiac surgeons really appreciate that the artificial heart is a real technology, not just a science project, that it's very vital in saving lives, then we're moving into the next phase. The next phase is to advance this heart, to develop advanced designs, which would remove some of the external things that people have to carry around. Our ultimate goal is to make the entire system completely implantable and to make it even more durable. We've been able to send man to the moon. We can make small little phone devices that are smartphones. We certainly can build a durable artificial heart as a permanent artificial organ. Syncardia, live longer, live better. For more, visit Syncardia.com.